Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the lens flare node. And this is another DaVinci Resolve effect available within Fusion. And it is studio version only. So we're going to jump into Fusion. And we've got some media. And uh, we've got this uh, person with a flashlight. And we want to add a little flare. And there is some flare going on. But it's uh, more more dirty lens flare but uh let's go ahead and add a better flare to this to make it a little uh a little nicer so i'm going to hit shift space and add a lens flare so lens flare i'm going to add it to our footage and if we look it's adding a lens flare and Within our display here, we can grab our little gizmo. We can move our flare around to its location. So we can go ahead and place it on our flashlight. And up top, we have two ways to be able to see our lens flare. So we've got the final result, which is on top of our media. And then we've got flare alone. And flare alone is primarily used for uh, building your little uh, flare so you can see it better. So if we move around, there's some extra little assets in our flare that we really can't see too well when we have our final result on and before we start getting into all the rest of this stuff let's go ahead and put our flare where it belongs and the best way to do this is to track your light source so what we can do is we can disconnect this and uh, let's go ahead and track our light source and we want to track this flashlight and we can try just to track it on its own but we might have some issues since it's kind of so blown out and it's got a lot of noise. Our tracker may or may not work, but uh, let's try. So we're going to add a tracker. And on our tracker, we're just going to select our flashlight area ish. And uh, let's see if we can track that. So let's go ahead and hit track forward. And we got a little uh, warning. So yeah, it didn't work. So let's go ahead and uh, do something else before we track this. So I'm going to add a bitmap and put our bitmap and we're going to change this to uh, luminance and we're really going to knock this down to where it's nothing but our little uh, flashlight light there popping through. And on this, I'm going to add a tracker. We're going to grab our tracker, stick it right there, and uh, I should probably input this into our tracker. There we go. And since we're in the middle, we're going to hit track forward and backward. And now we've got a good track on our uh, flashlight there. So we can get rid of this bitmap. We can even disconnect our tracker. We don't need it connected. And now let's re-add our lens flare here. And then on our lens flare, I'll go ahead and move this so you can see it's going to pop over. I'm going to go to our position, right click in our position, connect to our position of our tracker. So now we've got our lens flare following our flashlight. So there we go. Now under our lens flare, we have uh, some default presets. We can select blank. We can select the mirror and uh, a few other default uh, lens flare presets. But we're going to go ahead and just leave this on default. Under our composite type, we have uh, multiple ways we can composite it. So by default, it's add. We can select normal, subtract, and all of our other typical uh, composite types for our uh, layer there. We're going to leave this on add. Now on our light source masking, I'm going to come back to this afterwards after we cover everything else. So let's go down to position. And our position is just basically that, the position of our lens flare. You can see it's animated since we attach that to our tracker. So our position is animated. And under here where it says move with sizing, by checking this, the move with sizing checkbox just lets the lens flare retain its relative position within the frame if the input or the editing size has changed. So by checking this, we'll make sure our lens flare stays consistent. 
under global corrections, uh, we can pretty much change our scaling of our lens flare. The anamorphism of it, we can change that. We can change our lens flare center position. And that's basically everything that goes around our original lens flare. So if I move over here and I change our center position, you can see our lens flare is actually kicking out further. We can change our global defocus, which is going to soften it up or defocus that lens flare. We can change the global brightness, the global saturation. We can colorize the results. And under our colorization result, we can change that color. So if we want it to be green, we can change it to green. And our colorize the result will be green. So you can see it's got a greenish hue, not just on the flare, but over the entire footage. And we can change that color independently on the red, the green, and the blue. Under our aperture right here, we can just change the amount of blades we have in our aperture. And we can change the angle. Under our elements, this is where we actually customize our glare. So for show controls four, this is where we're going to select what element of the flare we want to control. And right now we're on the full screen glare, so we can change that brightness. And that basically is the glare that goes over the entire screen. And we can change the color. Now for each of these elements, you may or may not have different things to adjust. So if I go to our flare spot, you can see we've got more menu items for our flare spot. So we can change the size. We can change the irregularity of that flare. We can change the softness. And we can change the color. So we can change this to be a uh, bluish, kind of like a LED light maybe. And then we can change independently on the red, the green, and the blue. And then we can adjust our starburst. So down here, we're going to change our starburst color to kind of match that bluish color of our LED. We can change the size. We can change the softness of it. And we can change the split angle of our flare. And then once we change our angle, we can change the uh, split balance of that. So this is how you would adjust each element and to be able to figure out which one is you're just going to have to select it and maybe make a change, figure out which element is which. So this ghost one is this extremely large flare that's going around this rainbowish flare. And you can see there's multiple settings for this. So we can change the chroma shift of it. We can change the ringing. And this is where selecting this flare alone will help us see these colors a little better. And additionally, if we right click here, we can go to our options and we can uh, turn off these show controls so that white is out of the way and we can see some of that flare a little better. So. With Ghost 1 selected as our show controls for, we can change the Ghost 1 type if we wanted to. Right now it's set to disc shape, but we've got multiple settings so we can have the aperture shape. So you can see it changed to our aperture shape. We can have an anamorphic streak, which you can't see too well. We can have a bubble or we can have Corona rays. And under that we can adjust our color. So we can change the color of our Corona rays. We can change it independently on the red, the green, and the blue. We can change our position to bring it in or bring it out. We can change the size. We can change the edge brightness so we can make them brighter or dimmer. We can change the softness and let me go ahead and bring that up so we can see. We can change the softness of it. We can change the bristle density, the bristle scale, 
we can change the chromatic shift so we can bring that up a little bit the eclipse position so we can change the location of the eclipse so you can see it's dimming on the sides so we can change that location and we can change the eclipse chromatic shift and you would see this better if it was uh, set to say like a disc and we switch this you can see how that eclipse and the chromatic shift of the eclipse is changing and then under here we have the option to repeat so if we repeat this you can see it's given us multiple little uh, ghost shapes in here and once we change repeat we can change the repeat size position and the repeat size itself And by shutting that off, it gets rid of all these options. So you would go through each one and then select Ghost 2, change the shape. All the way down to Ghost 8. So we have eight options to be able to add stuff. So if we wanted to add a new one, we could just simply add a... Uh, we can add a anamorphic streak maybe. We can change our color to a nice blue blue there we go we can change the position the size we can change the height and then uh, let's get that position down in the middle and resize it we can change the softness of it And we can change the ringing of it. And we'll slightly change the chromatic shift. So now if we hit play, we've got our new little flashlight flare shining. And if we turn this on, now we can see our flare on top. So let's go back to uh, Ghost 1 and let's change that back to Disk. And we're going to uh, bring that down a little bit. So there we go. So that's it for the elements. And that's how you build your flare out. Now up top, we have uh, multiple ways to kind of mask this out. And right now our footage doesn't have anything for it to occlude or mask out. So let's go ahead and build something real quick. So let's add a background. Let's add a rectangle. We're going to input it and uh, let's go ahead and show our controls again. And let's change the size of this so it's like a, maybe a pole going in the, the middle of our footage there or going across. And uh, what way is our footage going? Going that way. And so our pole's got to go from right to left. So let's go ahead and animate our pole. So now we've got our pole animated. And for this to be able to work, we need the information coming in here before our lens flare. So what we need to do is we need to uh, go ahead and add a merge. We're going to merge our pole on top. So now if we play, we've got a little uh, pole going in front. But if you notice, it's not being occluded by our flare. So to be able to occlude it by our flare, what we need to do is on our flare, we just need to make sure we're selecting this uh, light source masking. So now if we go our flare is being occluded by anything in front of it. And the way this is working is, uh, let's go ahead and preview our mask. It's looking for anything in front of this light source that's going away to occlude it. So you can see our little flashlight as it passes. It's being occluded and coming back in. So if we go here, we can see it's now being occluded and popping back in. Now we can adjust how this pops back in by changing our uh, little max threshold here. 
So we can change this threshold to adjust how we want that to look when it's peeking back around by adjusting the mask threshold. So now it's popping down and slowly popping in. And our virtual light source size here just kind of determines how quickly once that reaches the middle of our flare, how quickly that virtual light source pops in and out. So if we adjust it, you can see we're getting a little more flare and let's go back one frame. So you can see how we can additionally adjust our flare center. So it pops in and out around that occluded object or a little pole there. And if we need to preview it, we can preview our spot source. So we can kind of see what's going on on the center of our little spot. And all this is, is a zoomed in version of this. So as we go in, we can see we're changing that. And if we uh, adjust our virtual light source, you can see how that's moving that center around our light source to pop in and out. So there we go. We have added a lens flare with occlusion using the lens flare node. So I will see you in the next node breakdown.